Hey gang, Walker Dibel, author of I Then Build, uh, creator of the Acquisition Lab. When I was in the startup world, I often wondered why uh, certain companies would succeed while the majority of them floundered. And now that I help um, uh, buyers, you know, pot potential buyers find and, and, and acquire a business, I find that there's kind of a, a similar concern um, where, you know, they want to find a company, but they don't want to make a mistake, right? And by, by you know, by, buying something incorrectly. And the thing is, is I, I, there's a lesson I want to share that is oddly applicable in both circumstances. So, you know, when I was, um, you know, when I was doing my MBA, I had a, I had a startup that uh, uh, didn't quite make it. Um, uh, we were licensing a certain technology and, and, the, and it ultimately fell apart. I'm not going to not going to go into that story, but I was in the startup world. I went through, you know, a, a, um, a ranked MBA program that had a, a, a great. Uh, I think they're they're currently number one in entrepreneurship, actually, uh, as a school, and um, they had a great program. You know, we 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 were in the business plan competition, did very well, uh, but but we but we failed as a as a as a startup company. Um, so shortly after, you know, many of you know my story. I ultimately bought uh, a book printing company. Was my my first business. And um, I ultimately uh, met a guy named Chad Troutwein, who actually ended up writing the forward for Buy Then Build. And Chad uh, grew a company called Veritas Prep, which became the largest privately held test prep company in the world. Uh, and they sold um, a year or two ago now. Um, and to a, oddly enough, to a company about, about a block away from me. But um, um, you know, the thing that I learned um, by watching Chad sort of uh, come into his own, if you will. I mean, they were they were sort of bursting at the seams at the at, at the Yale bookstore uh, when we sort of found each other, and then we started uh, manufacturing all of their books and kits. And you know what I learned by watching Chad was, you know, this wasn't this wasn't somebody who had a crazy idea, right? This wasn't someone who you know left the walled city and ran out uh, into the woods and tried to try to create a new market, okay? Um, instead, you know, it was something where uh, it, it was a growing space. Um, there was an obvious uh, uh, um, um, opportunity for him to offer a premium solution. Um, and most importantly, most importantly, uh, Chad had scored in the 99th percentile on the SAT, uh, the LSAT, uh, the GMAT, um, and, and probably uh, you know, the GRE and, you know, I mean, you know, so the thing was, was that like when it, when it came to Veritas Prep, their value proposition was, you know, if you wanted to go to the best business school you could, if you wanted to go to an Ivy League school, if you want to go to Harvard, Yale, you know, University of Chicago, I'll throw in there. So, you know, if you want to go to an Ivy League school, you really had no choice but to, but to go to Veritas Prep, right? I mean, what are you going to do? Go, go use, you know, Princeton Review or, or Kaplan like everybody else. And the thing was, was that Veritas Prep built... Um, their entire company, all of their instructors scored 99th percentile on the GMAT, okay? And they were, they were focused on the niche of, of, of getting people into the best business school possible, right? And the thing is, is that what I learned from Chad was that he was on the list of people that were allowed to create that company, okay? He went to Yale, okay? He scored the 99th percentile. Uh, he did all of the things that put him on the list of people that were allowed to start that business, that were allowed to succeed at starting it. Uh, my roommate from college uh, uh, has, is, is a film producer, and he's been in situations where they literally are like, we love this script, we love you, we love this team. Um, unfortunately, what you're trying to apply here, uh, you're sort of not on the list of people that's allowed to do this project. Uh, and so that's like a version of reality um, in, in lots of different industries, okay? And so it, it, it kind of, you know, it, it kind of blew my mind when I was reading um, Cal Newport's book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. And in it, he talks about the concept of career capital. And the concept of career capital is exactly what I saw in terms of entrepreneurs who are able to succeed. Um, um, uh, you know, when, 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 the, when the guys that started Square uh, went out for capital. Uh, you know, Jack Dorsey had already started Twitter. So, you know, I mean, for, for, for someone talking to a venture capital firm who had already started Twitter, what are the odds that they're gonna get capital? Pretty good. He had the career capital. And the reason I bring this up is because I got the idea to write Buy Then Build back in 2004, 
when I was trying to look for a business to buy, my first company, and I was failing on my search. It was opaque, fragmented, um, uh, private. You know, good, getting good data was, was impossible. Um, people were all over the place, and, and just the variance, and the quality variance was, was, was enormous, and so it was really hard to navigate. And so I got the idea of, listen, there's this market here, and like there's no good resources, right? So I got the idea in 2004 to write Buy Then Build. I certainly couldn't write the book, okay? I didn't have enough career capital. Um, ultimately, I ended up buying seven companies uh, uh, over a 10-year period, um, including you know, a failed search or two in there, um, and uh, uh, you know, wrote, wrote the best book I could, talked with a bunch of other entrepreneurs and used that for data to form a lot of my frameworks in terms of uh, the, the, you know, the prep funnel, the three forces of search and things like this. That's, that's actually not in the book, that's in the lab. But, but the point is, is, is I had to go earn the career capital in order to be allowed to write the book. And you know, here we are uh, two years later and we're crossing 30,000 copies sold, which I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm honored and blessed and humbled and never could have imagined that it would, that it would do so well. Um, and it's increasing every single month, like in terms of the copies that are sold. Thank you, by the way, thank you. Um, uh, but you know, the thing is, is that like I got the idea in 2010 for the acquisition lab. And the thing is, is that I could have started the acquisition lab before I, before I wrote Buy Then Build. Okay, and it would have been, hey, a lot of videos like this and a lot of me trying to tell you like, hey, I've bought companies and I've done all this other stuff. Uh, but the truth is, is that, you know, um, you can go read that book and you can read a book that took me four and a half years um, to write. You can read a book that cost me my entire net worth in investment. You can read a book that took um, millions in personal debt uh, to acquire all of these companies and manage the companies. Um, and so, you know, I've got an, a number of experiences that gave me enough career capital to translate it to that book. The book, in turn, has helped us launch uh, what we believe is um, the single best company to learn how to um, um, navigate this private, fragmented uh, marketplace and buy an existing business. Okay, and so, so you know, the concept here is that understanding what career capital you have. Okay, what is the thing that you bring to the table? Is the thing that ultimately will help you find the right business to buy, okay? So in other words, if you are a revenue generator and you just know how to grow a company through direct sales or marketing or email funnels or managing sales teams or, or through leveraging you know, um, um, existing distribution relationships you have, or you know, if you're a profit maximizer and you just really know how to squeeze out every single penny in a, in a manufacturing operation, or you know how to manage teams to make them more effective, um, you know, then, then you have a certain career capital that's innate to you that you bring to the table. And a lot of times we like to think that, you know, I wanna buy a business, but I don't wanna make a mistake, okay? And the truth is, is that the majority of the risk lies with you, the entrepreneur, the buyer, and making sure you do the things that will properly prepare you to make sure you buy the right company for you based on the right opportunity profile is really the biggest thing that you can do in order to, 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 to uh, uh, minimize the risk associated with your acquisition. So again, the building of career capital, according to Cal Newport, is, is you know, the single best thing that's going to lead to having you know, control, freedom, you know, what, ha, being passionate about your job and all these other things, okay? Taking that same career capital and applying it to startups, taking that same career capital and applying it to a business acquisition is, the, is, is potentially the single best thing that you can do in order to minimize risk and make sure that you're buying the right company for yourself, okay? Um, a, lot of, a lot of the things we talk about um, in, in, the, in, in the lab is that a lot of people they, they, when they buy, when they are looking for a business to acquire, they're just looking at the company. But you understand that the day after that acquisition, you are the CEO, you are the owner of that company. That company becomes you and you are the head of it, okay? And so you need to understand that you plus the company is a greater than just the company alone, okay? Um, listen, we've tried, to, we've tried to build the acquisition lab to be uh, uh, the best, the, the best tool out there for you know, instruction, tools, community, group coaching, um, you know, do it with you by side experience. Uh, if if you know, acquiring a business is something you're interested in and you wanna do it uh, in the next 12 months, 
Um, feel free to fill out the form below uh, and uh, we'll get you some information on applying. Thank you so much.